inflation targeting. Let us begin with the introduction. Hello friends, in this session I will discuss about the inflation targeting. But first of all, let us understand what inflation is. Inflation means a continuous and irreversible rise in the general level of prices. For any country, this situation is not good for growth and development because it discourages savings and investments. It also increases inequalities between the rich and poor. To tackle inflation, government adopts monetary and fiscal policies. Nowadays, in almost all the countries, the primary goal of the central bank is to achieve the short run and the medium run low rate of inflation. This is done through adopting the policy of inflation targeting. Under this setup, the central bank estimates and projects target inflation rate and then make efforts to take the actual inflation to the target inflation. And this is done by the use of tools such as interest rate because an interest rate and inflation rate moves in opposite directions. According to some advocates of inflation targeting, it will lead to increased economic stability. There are 28 countries that have adopted inflation targeting. They have fixed the consumer price index as their monetary policy goal. Now let us look at a table. Here on the left side we have country like New Zealand, Canada, United Kingdom and Australia. Our first column depicts inflation targeting adoption date which are 1990, 1991, 1992 and 1993. In the other column we have inflation rate at adoption date in percentages. That would be for New Zealand in 1990 it is 3 0.30. For Canada in 1991 is 6.90. For United Kingdom in 1992 is 4.00. For Australia in 1993 it is 2.00. Next column we have 2010 end of year inflation in percentage. For New Zealand, in year 1990, we have 4.03. For Canada, in 1991, we have 2.23. For United Kingdom, in 1992, we have 3.39. For Australia, in 1993, we have 2.65. The last column, as we can see here, is target inflation rate in percentages. For New Zealand in 1990, it is between 1 to 3. For Canada in 1991 is 2 plus or minus 1. For United Kingdom in 1992, it is 2. For Australia in 1993, it is between 2 and 3. New Zealand was the first country to adopt inflation targeting in 1990 while making transition from the centrally planned economy to market economy, countries like Armenia, the Czech Republic, Hungary and Poland adopted inflation targeting. Countries like Finland, Spain and Slovak Republic have stopped inflation targeting after they adopted the euro as their domestic currency. Friends, now let us look at requirements of inflation targeting. It requires two things. Number one, freedom in choosing the instruments. This is the first requirement of inflation targeting because central banks are not entirely independent of government influence. But it doesn't mean that fiscal policy will dictate monetary policy. Central banks should be able to conduct monetary policy with some freedom. Central bank must be free in choosing the monetary instruments to achieve the target inflation rate. Number two, the second requirement is that the monetary authorities should be willing as well as 
able to target only inflation rate and no other indicators like wages, level of employment, exchange rate, etc. After meeting these two requirements, there are several other preliminary requirements to be fulfilled. Set quantitative targets for inflation specifically for a particular number of periods ahead. The primary target of the monetary authority is to hit the inflation target and all the other objectives are secondary. Build up a model or methodology for predicting inflation which would help in tracing indicators that contain information about future inflation. Now let us look at elements of inflation targeting. Inflation targeting is a recent monetary policy strategy that encompasses five main elements. Number one being the public announcement of medium term numerical targets for inflation. Number two, an institutional commitment to price stability as the primary goal of monetary policy to which other goals are subordinated. Number three, an information inclusive strategy in which many variables and not just monetary aggregates or the exchange rate are used for deciding the setting of policy instruments. Number four, increased transparency of the monetary policy strategy through communication with the public and the markets about the plans, objectives and decisions of the monetary authorities. Number five, increased accountability of the central bank for attaining its inflation objectives. Now friends, let us look at inflation targeting works in the following ways. After understanding the meaning of inflation and inflation targeting, now we will understand how it works. In theoretical concept, inflation targeting is very straightforward. First, the central bank predicts the future path of inflation and then compares it with the rate which the government believes is in sync with the economy, that is the in target inflation rate. The difference between these two gives the government the correct idea of the adjustments in the monetary policy. Different countries have different methods to adopt the target. Like some countries have chosen the targets with symmetrical ranges around the midpoint, while others have identified only a target rate or an upper limit to inflation. It is seen that all countries have set their target in the low single digit. No country targeted zero inflation rate because nominal inflation stimulates the demand which will boost the economy. Now we will discuss about how the inflation target can be achieved with the help of Taylor's rule. John Taylor argued in 1990s that to achieve the inflation target, central banks should choose interest rate rather than nominal money growth rate because the central bank affects spending through the interest rate. John Taylor has also given a rule to the central bank to set the interest rate. This rule is known as Taylor's rule. Taylor's rule is IT is equal to I star plus A into pi T minus pi star bracket closed minus B into bracket starts UT minus UN bracket closed. Here pi T is the rate of inflation, pi star is the target rate of inflation, IT is the nominal rate of interest. I star is the target interest rate, UT is the unemployment rate, UN is the natural rate of unemployment, A and B are positive coefficients. According to Taylor's rule, there are three cases. Case number one, if inflation and target inflation rate is equal, that is, pi T is equal to pi star and the unemployment rate and natural rate of the unemployment are equal that is ut is equal to un then the central bank should set the nominal interest rate it equal to its target value i star by doing this the economy can stay on the same path that is 
inflation equal to the target inflation rate and unemployment equal to the natural rate of unemployment. This is known as full employment equilibrium. If at this point actual GDP equals potential GDP. Now let us consider case 2. If inflation is higher than the target that is pi t is greater than pi star, the central bank should increase the nominal interest rate that is i t above i star because higher interest will increase the unemployment and consequently decrease inflation. Coefficient a should reflect how much the central bank cares about inflation. Taylor pointed out that a should be larger than 1 because for spending real interest rate is more important rather than nominal interest rate. Let us look at case 3. If unemployment is higher than the natural rate of unemployment that is ut is greater than un the central bank should decrease the nominal interest rate. When the nominal interest rate is lower it will increase output which leads to decrease in unemployment. Coefficient b should reflect how much the central bank cares about unemployment. Higher b means central bank is ready to deviate from target inflation and give importance to unemployment. It will try to keep unemployment close to the natural rate of unemployment. Taylor concluded that these rules should not be followed blindly. The policies should be a mix between monetary policy and fiscal policy. When the central bank finalizes the target rate of inflation and it should try to achieve it by adjusting nominal interest rates. The rule also says that not only current inflation but also current unemployment should be taken into consideration. Now let us look at relationship between Phillips curve, inflation and unemployment. It is said that inflation target would be controversial if it is used in short run because focusing only on inflation would seem to remove role of monetary policy in reducing output fluctuations. But this is not necessary and it can be proved by the help of Phillips curve which shows the relationship among inflation and unemployment that is pi t is equal to pi t minus 1 minus a bracket u t minus u n bracket closed. In the following equation pi t is the inflation, pi t minus 1 is the lacked inflation, u t minus u n is the deviation of the unemployment rate from natural rate, u n is the natural rate of unemployment. Suppose that the target inflation rate be pi star. Now if the central bank achieves its inflation target exactly in every period then the relation would be pi star is equal to pi star minus a bracket ut minus un bracket closed. The equation shows that the unemployment rate ut will be equal to natural rate of unemployment un. Implication is output would always be equal to the natural rate of output and hence inflation targeting helps central bank to eliminate all deviations of output from its natural level. Now let us look at inflation targeting in India. Finance minister announced the inflation targeting in India in 2016. Under this the government and RBI got a memorandum of understanding for adopting the cooperative policies to meet the inflation target. The main features of inflation targeting are number one there is a single target which is to meet the target inflation. Number two, there is a single instrument used by RBI to meet the target of short term interest rate that is repo rate. Number three, there is single objective that is price stability. Inflation targeting was introduced in India several years after suggestion of its adoption by the Urjit Patel committee. Following are the main attributes of the inflation targeting regime introduced in India. Now let us look at the monetary policy committee. The MPC would be entrusted 
with the task of fixing the benchmark policy rate, which is the repo rate required to contain inflation within the specified target level. Under the RBI Act, the central government in consultation with the RBI determines the inflation target in terms of the consumer price index, which is CPI, once in every five years. This target would be notified in the official gazette. Now let us look at determination and notification of inflation target. In exercise of the powers conferred under the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934, the central government in consultation with RBI has fixed the inflation target for the period beginning from August 5, 2016 and ending on the March 31st, 2021 as under. Number 1, inflation target 4%. Number 2, upper tolerance level 6%. Number 3, lower tolerance level 2%. While setting the above target, the government elaborated that inflation targeting in India will consider the growth dimensions also. The key advantage of a range around a target is that it allows MPC to recognize the short-run trade-offs between inflation and growth, but it enables it to pursue the inflation target in long run over the course of business cycle. Now let us look at circumstances for the recovery of the failed monetary policy. The fresh element in the government notification is the interpretation of monetary policy failure and the launch time for correction measures. As per the policy, if inflation goes above 6% or goes below 2% for three consecutive quarters, then it will be treated as the failure of the RBI's monetary policy. Counteractive measures should be initiated in such a scenario. Now let us look at what will RBI do if the inflation target is not met. The new notification also prescribes the procedure to be followed by the RBI if the target is missed. Where RBI fails to meet the inflation target, it shall set out a report to the central government stating the reasons for failure to achieve the inflation target, remedial actions proposed to be taken by RBI and an estimate of the time period within which the inflation target shall be achieved pursuant to timely implementation of proposed remedial actions. Now let us look at what is the time period for a set target. The central government in consultation with the RBI determines the inflation target in terms of the consumer price index CPI once in every five years. This target would be notified in the official gazette. The current target will end on 31st March 2021. Now let us look at controversy regarding inflation targeting, IT for short. Dilemma regarding price stability is, inflation targeting is such a unique and controversial attribute that the central bank should give priority to price stability. This strategy makes the inflation targeting framework generally unacceptable in the developing world. This is because there are two issues when inflation targeting is to be adopted by the developing country's central bank. First issue is price stability is a crucial objective of the general macroeconomic objective in fast growing economies. The achievement of faster economic growth is equally important. Secondly, usually there is a conflict between the objective of price stability and economic growth. Another limitation of inflation targeting in countries like India is that it neglects the real cause of inflation like supply side factors like agricultural supply shocks which can't be solved by any monetary policy action. Another point is there is intense debate about the suitability of inflation targeting in developing economies on the one hand while on the other hand Several economists refute the previous argument by saying that after the global financial crisis, inflation targeting has lost much of its relevance. There is a third point to it. A negative side of inflation targeting as an ideology is that it openly accepts reduction of economic growth. 
as a way to achieve price stability. Nonetheless, growth is as important as price stability. Now let us look at achievement of target. Till now we have understood what inflation targeting, how it works and now we will discuss whether this inflation targeting is on target or not. First point, if we want to compare the effects of inflation targeting and the concurrent economic reforms, it is difficult to do that. Nonetheless, the evidence proves that inflation targeting supports the effectiveness of the framework which lowers inflation and its volatility. Second point would be, in the developing economies, inflation targeting is more resilient in disturbing environment. In some cases, inflation targeting is more effective than monetary policy in grounding the public inflation expectations. Third point, the United Kingdom adopted inflation targets in 1992 in order to restore a nominal anchor and to lock in past disinflationary gains. Until May 1997, inflation targeting was conducted under severe political constraints. That is, under a system in which the government, not the central bank, set the monetary policy instruments. Despite this handicap, British inflation targeting helped produce lower and more stable inflation rates. The success of inflation targeting in the United Kingdom can be attributed to the Bank of England's focus on transparency. Now we will look at inflation targeting is not the only solution. First point would be, there is a need to assess by the countries that whether the inflation targeting regime is suiting their needs or not. For example, in many economies, exchange rate plays the central role in stabilizing output and inflation. In such economies, it is a matter of concern that whether the inflation targeting is subordinate to exchange rate or not. Point number two, the European Central Bank, the United States Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan and the Swiss National Bank have adopted many of the elements of the inflation targeting. But they have not announced any numerical targets to achieve. Rather, their aim is to promote maximum employment and moderate long-term interest rates. Economist Chang He says, Inflation targeting appears to have provided a successful nominal anchor for conducting monetary policy in the countries that have adopted it so far. However, indicators of long-term inflation expectations still seem to reveal lingering doubts about whether current low inflation will be extended into the future. This suggests how difficult it can be to establish the credibility of monetary policy, while institutional changes may enhance credibility, it will take years of solid performance to earn the public's full belief in the central bank's commitment to low inflation. Friends, now let us conclude today's session. Beginning in the early 1990s, price stability became an increasingly important goal of the monetary authorities in many countries. But some central banks found the traditional approaches, namely, influencing inflation and economic activity by controlling intermediate variables like monetary aggregates or an exchange rate, not very successful. As a result, these central banks faced the serious possibility of losing credibility. To address this problem, several industrialized countries, New Zealand, 1990, Canada in 1991, the United Kingdom in 1992 and Sweden in 1993 adopted monetary policy regimes that target inflation directly. These regimes are said to be transparent and therefore more credible to the public. Because the central bank makes an explicit commitment to conduct monetary policy to meet a specified numerical inflation rate target within a specified time frame. The explicit target provides an anchor for monetary authorities and it also serves as an anchor for private market expectations. Thank you friends.